In today's video, I wanna share with you what I think is some of the worst advice that I see out there all the time. I see it on TikTok, I see it on Facebook. I'm gonna share with you what that bad advice is and then after I take a look at this TikTok and show you what I'm talking about, we're gonna go into a deep dive. I'm gonna explain exactly why this is horrible advice. First off, let's take a look at this TikTok. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Stock pick of the day, SPXL. It is a three times leverage of the S&P. If the S&P goes up 1%, SPXL will go up 3%. It's the same for the downside. If it's down one, it goes down three. This is a way for people with less capital to make a quick buck on the S&P. This stock would be a long-term buy and hold type of stock for me. Anywhere between 90 to $100 is my safe range where I would buy and feel okay about it. So the question is, should you buy and hold leveraged ETFs? This was talking about SPXL, but that goes for the TQQ, SQQ, UVXY. Take your pick on a leveraged ETF product. Now, the question that I want to go into and what I think is a horrible advice is not whether or not you should trade or utilize these instruments, because I think there are opportunities and there are ways to use these leveraged ETFs in a very productive and profitable way but the bad advice is that you can hold these ETFs these leveraged ETFs for the long haul and these are not designed to be holding products you're not supposed to buy and hold a leveraged ETF and I'm gonna show you why that can be bad investment advice should you buy and hold leverage ETFs? The answer to that is a resounding no, and here's why. Leveraged ETFs are designed to be held for the short term. This is due to a phenomenon called volatility decay, and we're gonna go through this in some detail. And so holding a leveraged ETF for the long term can be very dangerous. And this is the case even with hypothetical, and you'll hear people talk about it, it's a perfect leveraged ETF, which incurs no expense ratio and perfectly replicates three times the index every single day. If you're following this logic, and it seems like great logic, if I can get three times what happens, and if the general stock market goes up, and I can get three times, so if the market goes up 1%, I return 3%. If the market goes up 10%, I'm going to make 30%. It seems like a no-brainer to buy these leveraged ETFs and to just buy them and hold them. But you need to stop for a second and start to consider. If this is a no-brainer, a no-lose situation, why is everybody not doing it? Why would you not go out and borrow money to invest in it? Why isn't everybody already doing it? Here's, the big, here's one of the reasons why. If you're in a three-time leverage product and you're not on margin, and the market corrects 33%, which happens without even it being a crash, it can correct 33%, you're broke. If you're on margin, if you're borrowing margin to buy these leveraged ETF and the market corrects only 15%, you're broke. So let's look at a hypothetical index to kind of show you why these triple leveraged ETFs are not a buy and hold investment. And so uh, A is going to be a frugal doctor index. This is a made-up index, the AFD index. And it's going to start at 1,000. And over the next week of trading, the index posts small but consistent gains, which often happens in an uptrend in the SPY or the QQQs or the DAOs or the RUT. You get those small, little, consistent uptrends. And it ends the week at 1,011. Pretend there's also a hypothetical ETF that is triple leveraged. It's three times the AFD, which perfectly amplifies every daily movement of that 3X and ends the week at 1,034. In this scenario, triple leverage worked out perfect, exactly as expected. Here's a look at that chart in our hypothetical index. We start at 1,000, the index itself, goes to 1,100. However, your triple leverage index went all the way up. That is a small chop, 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 chop up for an entire week, which does happen. When you have a non-volatile -vol instrument, 
leveraging works exactly as expected when there is no variance when it's only up 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 these triple leverage products work exactly as expected you can see the daily returns monday was up tuesday was up wednesday was up thursday was up friday was up the three times leverage etf worked exactly as expected now that's when there is zero volatility we know historically stocks are volatile even in uptrends very seldom do you have every single day for an indefinite period of time especially when you're looking at buying and holding these triple leveraged etfs you're not going to have a period of one year two year five years where all the market does is go up 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 without volatility it, this is what often happens in the stock market or in your index it gains three percent one day and then it loses seven percent the next and so on those might be extreme examples but you get the point that it's one two three steps up two steps back it's up and down now after a week of trading the index still ends maybe at the end of the trading it still ends at that exact same number as in our previous example at 1011. now let's see how this triple leverage performed compared to the index itself under these market circumstances which included volatility now you'll see here these are the same numbers this etf moved the same amount in the week at the end of the week versus the end of the week the only difference in this example is that there was volatility during the week up down up down and you'll see in this example that your triple leveraged etf if you bought on sunday night or on monday morning you did not end up higher you actually ended up lower so why is this this is because when you're dealing with a three times leveraged product there is an amplification of both the gains and the losses and that's what makes this leveraged product more volatile than the underlying etf which you're tracking and this can result in a sequence of returns where the index ends positively on a weak monthly or yearly basis but the leveraged etf ends up negative in fact because any loss is so devastating when amplified the leveraged etf can only reliably beat the index if volatility is minimal and even when it does beat the index over the long haul it is unlikely to return 3x of the index itself and remember this is a perfect example this is a perfect example this is an example where there is no expense ratio it's a hundred percent perfect this is just taking on the volatility let's also consider the downside risk which we talked about a little bit earlier if a normal index ends down 34 percent you still have 66 percent of your portfolio left for future recovery as you have big dips as we've seen during the financial crisis the covid crisis if you had it just as a standard etf you took a substantial loss but within a few months you were able to regain that loss however if you were in a triple leveraged etf prior to any one of those crashes you were completely wiped out this makes it impossible for you to get back to even Here's the detail of those daily returns of what happens when there's volatility. So 3% up on Monday, 7% down, 4% up, 6% down, ends the week positive at 8%. The index ends up positive. Your triple leverage product loses money on the week. That was a hypothetical example. Now let's go ahead and look at a real world example. Let's go back to the S&P 500 index and the triple leverage UPRO. Now we saw that on any given day, the UPRO can amplify the S&P 500 by 3x. That's on any one day, a short term hold. But what happens over the course of a year? Now, as you can see, the S&P 500 peaked on February 19th, 2020. It crashed and then it quickly recovered those losses in March and it ended the year significantly higher than it began. Now, when it did this, it also eclipsed the peak on February 19th prior to the crash. And the August UPRO, on the other hand, did not. 
UPRO, on the other hand, it did a remarkable job of triple leveraging gains from the bottom back up, but it ended 2020 barely above where it opened the year. And it did not surpass its previous February 19th peak until January 2021. Here's the takeaway, here's the moral of the story, is that while leveraged ETFs, they sound good on paper, the volatility decay affects their performance in unexpected ways. Even for a long-term investor who is certain that the stocks only go up, it is almost always better to simply buy the index itself. More broadly, using any type of leverage on investing can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Here, I love this quote, what Warren Buffett said, when leverage works, it magnifies your gains. Your spouse thinks you're clever and your neighbors get envious, but leverage is addictive. Having profited from its wonders, very few people retreat to more conservative practices. And as we all learned in third grade, and some learned in 2008, any series of positive numbers, however impressive the numbers may be, evaporates when multiplied by a single zero. History tells us that leverage all too often produces zeros, even when it is employed by smart people. If you're considering investing in leverage ETFs, please consider the downsides and how those returns can impact your return overall. These instruments definitely have a place as they do track in non-volatile environments in a very positive correlated way. However, that is on a short-term basis. Buying and holding a leveraged ETF very seldom, if ever, over a long enough period of time, given natural volatility in the stock market, will produce three times the gains of the underlying ETF. 